Not much time is devoted to VOR navigation during private pilot training, but there are some questions about it on the written test, and you should be prepared to intercept and track a VOR radial during your check ride. There's a lot of misinformation floating around out there, and just because you saw it on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Case in point, and here's the scenario. You're on your check ride, and the examiner has asked you to intercept the 090 radial at some VOR and fly it outbound. Pretty simple, right? Your airplane is located here, southwest of the VOR. You know that because you put in the frequency, 113.7, in your nav radio, and you turned the OBS until you got a centered needle with a from flag. That shows that you're on the 210 radial, southwest of the station and on the other side of the VOR from the radial you're supposed to intercept. Now the examiner isn't going to be too much of a stickler. He doesn't care if you fly straight to the VOR and then turn eastbound on the radial or if you fly to the right of the VOR and intercept the radial out there. But he does want to see that you know the proper procedures and terminology. If you follow the advice you may have seen elsewhere, this is where the wheels start to come off the wagon. First of all, you need to know what a radial is. Radials start at the station and proceed outward. They're like highways that have a specific origin and follow a straight line away from that starting point. Not only do they have a specific magnetic bearing, but they are also named with that bearing. The 090 radial starts at the VOR and proceeds eastward on a 090 bearing. It is named the 090 radial just like a highway is named. The radial on the opposite side of the VOR is the 270 radial. That is its name and also its magnetic bearing. Radials always proceed away from the station. You may fly toward the station on the radial, but the radial's name remains unchanged. The 270 radial is not the 0902 radial. Despite what you may have heard on the internet, there are no two radials. They are not commonly called two radials, and no, everybody doesn't call them that. If you try to convince your examiner that the reciprocal of the radial you're supposed to intercept is the two radial, he's not going to be impressed. The radial is the course line. The bearing is your airplane's track. Don't confuse the two. Do not fly toward the 270 radial and intercept that to fly eastbound. I've seen it suggested, but don't do it. It will ultimately have the same result. You'll end up on the 090 radial, but it isn't what the examiner asked for. And if you were an IFR pilot, ATC would be quite upset if you didn't understand the distinction. So your job is to intercept the 090 radial and fly it outbound. It starts at the VOR, so that's the earliest point that would be acceptable for your intercept. In this situation, with you to the southwest, you could either fly straight to the VOR, then turn right to track the 090, or you could fly further east and intercept it past the VOR. Here's how you do that. First, dial in 090 on the Omni bearing indicator. That's so you can identify the radial when you get there. Second, calculate a heading to fly for your intercept. You know the outbound bearing you'll need to track the 090 radial. It's 90 degrees. So, figure a bearing that will allow you to intercept the radial at an angle of 30 or maybe 45 degrees. Assuming a 45 degree intercept, subtract 45 from 90 and that gives you an initial heading of 45 degrees. Fly 045 applying any needed wind correction and you'll approach the 090 radial at a 45 degree angle. When the CDI, the needle on the indicator, gets almost to the center, turn right to the outbound heading of 090 and fly eastward. That's how you fly an intercept and that will get you a nice check mark on the examiner's list. Start talking about two radials and that check mark could turn into a big red X. For Gold Seal, I'm Russ Still. And there ain't no such thing as a two radial.